The tale of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, although it is somewhat outside of the canon of Arthurian legend, is nonetheless one of the most known stories within these Arthurian stories. And so I want to uh, look at the story of Sir Gawain, look at the symbolism that's there. I will probably make this video in two parts. The first part will be kind of explaining the uh, setup of the story, tell you the story, uh, the first part of the story, and then look at the symbolism that's involved in there. And in the next patron-only video, we'll do the second part as well. This is Jonathan Pajot. Welcome to the Symbolic World. So I'll give you a basic sense of the story, of the first part of the story. Of course, this is going to be very summary. If you're interested in this uh, story, it's it's very much worth reading. It's very well written. It's, a, it's one of the finer of the medieval romances. And uh, I don't know if you can call it a romance, but at least medieval legends or stories. And so the story starts in the court of King Arthur. And so King Arthur has these massive parties with all the knights of the round table. And the story is happening during Yuletide, during the time of Christmas, more specifically at the New Year. It is a New Year's feast and it is customary for... Arthur to not eat until he has heard of some story, some challenge, some adventure that his knights or the people in his court had had gone into. And so while this is happening, while everybody's kind of waiting to see what's going to happen, a giant green knight walks into the castle. The story takes a lot of time to describe his armor, his clothing, his hair that is green and gold. And his horse is green, he is green, his clothes is green. Everything about him is green with gold ornamentation. So this green knight walks in and says that he wants to offer a challenge to the court of King Arthur. And his challenge is that he asks that one person in the court comes and takes one blow at his neck with his axe. And whoever is willing to do that will get a full blow at his neck on the promise that in the year that comes, that person will then accept to be dealt the same blow. And so everybody's kind of silent. Everybody's kind of wondering what is going on. This, this massive giant green knight walking in and offering such a strange challenge. And so King Arthur is kind of waiting, and finally, because no one is speaking up, King Arthur speaks up and you know says that he is going to do it. And as he is getting ready to do it, uh, Guinevere encourages uh, Sir Gawain to propose himself as the one to take the challenge. So Sir Gawain accepts the challenge, walks up to the Green Knight, and the Green Knight places himself, exposes his neck, Gawain takes a swing, cuts the head off the Green Knight, but then the Green Knight reaches down, grabs his own head in his hand, gets back on his horse, and says, in one year, exactly one year from now, you are to meet me at the Green Chapel in order to receive your blow. And the Green Knight leaves. And so then Sir Gawain waits the whole year, very uneasily, everybody is kind of uneasy about the situation, knows what is coming, wondering what's going to happen. And the whole story kind of passes through the seasons and then moves all the way to uh, All Hallows Day, which is the, you know, it's after Halloween, the day after Halloween, All Hallows Day, the day where all the dead are, all the saints are celebrated and all the dead are celebrated in that period. And that is when the, uh, that is when uh, Gawain decides to go off on his journey and starts to move out in order to find the green chapel. And he goes out and moves into the forest and uh, gets kind of lost in the forest and 
he moves to North Wales, you know, which is understood at this this kind of far away place, you know, where all the Celts were were pushed later on in in a uh, in um, in medieval history, and so he kind of wanders through the forest, is lost, and everything. And then finally, he on Christmas Eve, he perceives the light of a castle in the distance and goes and finds refuge in the castle. And in the castle is where the rest of the adventure is going to take part. But I want to focus just on the first part of Gawain's story right now and look at some of the symbolism that we already see in this story. So... It's really important to understand the story of Sir Gawain to understand the the cycle of the year and the symbolism of the year itself. And so Gawain, the Green Knight, appears at the Arthur's castle at New Year's. And so in the description, there's a description of Yule tide of the time of, of, you know, during the Christmas season, but also the New Year. And so we need to understand the moment where this happens as the end and the beginning of something. And so it's related, of course, to the solstice in terms of the day, the lowest day of the sun. It's related to this transition between the old and the new, the transition towards the new year. And so this is what we are seeing happening in this moment. And so the Green Knight, it's very, it's difficult to be precise in what the Green Knight means, but there is definitely a relationship between the Green Knight and the idea of this primordial forest, the idea of the ancient world. And so if you know a little bit about medieval culture, you know a little bit about the green men and the uh, the notion of these green ornamental figures that were carved in churches and represent this kind of man made of foliage and a, you know, a kind of ancient primordial world, a world before before the Romanization, before Christianity. And I think that that's really what the green man manifests. We will learn later that he is actually doing this under the guise of Morgan Le Fay, this witch, uh, this kind of sorceress who is ambiguous and strange and also seems to represent a residue of the ancient world. There's also a relationship between the green man and Merlin, from some of the stories where Merlin is represented as this wild man, as a you know, as this wild man who lives in the forest, and so the, none of these associations are direct; they're somewhat indirect. Uh, there is also relationships to other other cultures, other traditions, which also use the notion of the green man. I think it is related to this a figure in Islamic storytelling who is known as Al Qadir and who is a, a figure that appears in the Quran as posing enigmas to Moses. Moses meets this strange, uh, mysterious figure who's not actually named in the Quran, but who is named later in tradition. And the, uh, the, the figure poses enigmas that, that, uh, that Moses is not able to answer these very strange enigmas. And it's really, if you watch my video on the, the story of silence, you will see there's a connection in that story between Merlin and uh, Al Qadir, and then also here in the notion of the green man, which is the posing of a mystery, the posing of something which is before logic and doesn't make sense and represents a world which is before the reasonable ordered world. And so you can imagine it as this kind of burst of the ancient world into the the court of King Arthur. And this burst of the ancient world represents itself as this kind of primordial wild verdant green, the forest. It represents itself also as a challenge to order a challenge to order which doesn't seem to make sense because the challenge is is a challenge which is illogical. The the figure is saying, cut my head off, right? That's the challenge. Is, is And so there's a strange contradiction in the challenge, something which, like I said, precedes order, doesn't fit within the normal battle challenge that would usually appear, right? The knight didn't come and say, fight me. He said, come and, and, and basically cut my head off, which doesn't make sense. But it makes sense if you understand it in the time of the transition between the old and the new. If you understand the cutting of the head of the green man as the solstice itself, 
as the cutting off of the old year, as the cutting off of the sun, which is going down into the earth, you can understand what is happening at this moment. And so the challenge is for Gawain to chop the head off the old world, to basically inaugurate the new year. And so there is a mystery in doing that, because in cutting off the head of the old of the old and inaugurating the new you throw yourself into a cycle you can understand it in there are several stories that talk about this for example the story of the castrating of the of the god of heaven in greek mythology where you castrate the father god the old god the old legion of gods that that aren't you you castrate that Sometimes it's a dismembering of an ancient figure, a dismembering of an ancient giant. Uh, there, are, there are different versions of the same story where you break apart, you dismember, you cut off the head of that which was before. And that is what launches the new year because you, you basically cut the head off and you have this new body that you can reorganize into a new world. Uh, and so, like I said, but when, to, when you do that, you inaugurate the cycle of revolution. And so... If you chop, if you castrate the father, the father God, then you are also going to be castrated afterwards. Maybe not castrated, you're going to be eaten by your father, right? So, so uh, Saturn cuts the, the genitals off of his father, but then he ends up like eating his children, but then that kind of flips. And so there's this weird like flip that keeps happening. And then finally Zeus ends up killing his father or, you know, dismembering his father or hurting his father or whatever i forget actually how it goes but it doesn't matter the, the idea is re this relationship between the old guard and the new guard this is what we're seeing happening and so gawain cuts the head off the off the, the this ancient world but then the the challenge is that if he does that in a year at the solstice once again is when he is going to get his head cut off as well right he has kind of thrown himself into that loop. And, and so that is what is happening. And you make sense in the story itself, because as you see, it happens, the beginning of his quest happens at Hall All Hallows. All Hallows is midway between the equinox and the solstice. And so it is in that moment, because at the equinox, you have this balance between the two day, the day and the night, right? You have this equilibrium, but it's an, uh, it's a, it's an equilibrium which is going down. And so halfway between the equinox and the solstice is where you really would start to notice and you would really start to experience the diminishing of the days and the diminishing of the year. And so Gawain, as the one who cut the head off the pre previous year, is now going into the darkness and entering into the, the dark world, moving out into the margin where he is now going to experience getting his head cut off. And so as he approaches in the forest, of course, he gets lost and he perceives the castle in the, in the distance. And what's going to happen in the castle is really going to be his going out into the margin and experiencing everything about being in the world of the margin, including a weird upside down reality in which he's going to get into. And, uh, and it's going to also be a test of his identity, a test which he is going to not completely, uh, he's not completely going to be uh, the conqueror in this test. He is going to give in a little bit. And this giving in is ultimately, though, going to end up turning back into his favor. And so we're going to look at the second part of the story of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight uh, in my next patron only video. As you may have noticed, this video was first put out as a patron-only video in September 2020. I'm also going to be putting out the second part of my analysis of Sir Gawain in a week from now. And so I'm really uh, driving people these days to go to my website and to sign up at the bottom of the website, to subscribe to the website. As uh, internet censorship is going up, as we feel the pressure from social media to say certain things and to not say other things, I'm hoping to uh, remain as free as possible. And if you subscribe to the website, then you have a better chance of having news from what I'm doing, even if YouTube bans me or if uh, I get shadow banned, whatever can happen. 
If you're subscribed to the website, you will be able to uh, follow what we're doing, not only the videos, but also the blog where we have several people writing about symbolism, uh, some pretty amazing writers there as well. And you'll be able to follow all the new changes that are going on. I will be integrating the Clips channel into the website. I'll we'll also be having a uh, French part to the website as well. You can follow all that news if you subscribe. And so uh, thanks for your support, everybody, and I'll talk to you very soon.